Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin Corker, and I'm the president of Artful Travelers, and I'm also the producer of Spotlight on Public Broadcasting and other Spotlight programs at Region 7 Seas. We hope you're all safe, you're all doing well, and we all look forward to traveling the Seven Seas again soon on Regent. Those of us who've sailed with us before know we have this special tradition. It's called Cocktails and Conversation. It's a process where we gather our guests in the observation lounge at five o'clock, grab a cocktail, and allow everyone to ask questions from our speakers and our performers about their careers, about their life histories. And we thought that this would be a great opportunity for us to redo this, this uh, tradition today for you um, as part of the Regent Connect program. And we're really excited because we're gonna kick off our Spotlight program today by introducing some of our Spotlight ambassadors. These are folks that have traveled with us before and have been, participated in many cocktails and conversations. And uh, let me take a couple minutes to uh, let them introduce themselves to you. So first, from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Colleen Crowley. Hi, everybody. Welcome, Colleen. From Richmond, Virginia. Molly and Rusty. Hi, everybody. From Edmond, Oklahoma. Nice to see everybody. Hello, Linda. From the Philadelphia area. Mary Ann Tevins and Robert Potter. Welcome. From Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> From Vancouver, British Columbia. Are you there? I am here. I am here, Josh Murray. Great to see you, Josh. From Guthrie, Oklahoma. Jeff Freshour, here I am. Glad to be here today. Great, Jeff. Welcome. And from Palm Springs. Hi, everybody. Great to see you all. <laughs> that, that would be Seth Howell. So we are really, really excited to welcome the multi-award winning singer, actress, two-time Tony nominee, Christine Andreas, and her husband, Grammy-nominated producer, composer, arranger, Martin Silvestri. Now, Christine and Marty are fan favorites who have sailed on many, many, many of our spotlight cruises on Regent. And believe it or not, we were all supposed to be sailing through France today on the Explorer. And while we wish we were experiencing Edith Piaf sung by Christine Andreas in Bordeaux tonight, yes. um, we're very appreciative to just have them joining us from their home in Connecticut. So grab your favorite beverage, Join us as we visit Christine Andreas and Marty Silvestri for Cocktails and Conversation. Christine and Marty, welcome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. As I said, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't seem quite the same, but it's nice to see those faces in any case. Good to see you all. I hope you're all faring well in these times, you know, and it won't be long, hopefully, before we're back at sea. That would be yeah. really nice. Amen. 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 Well, Christine, on and getting up in the morning yeah. and putting on my elastic pants. <laughs> <laughs> in our grand well, day existence, yeah. So, Christine and Marty, thanks for uh, joining us and thanks for your willingness to do this and to share this with all of our guests at Regent. Uh, as, as you know, in Cocktails and Conversation, I have the privilege of asking the first question. So, I'll start in our session today. And, and I'd like to ask you, if you would, to tell the story about how both of you met, because it's an interesting one that a lot of our guests are intrigued to hear. And what is the story? How did you guys meet? Of course, we don't agree about it, probably, but um, <laughs> so I'll start and then Marty will correct me. Is that good? Um, Marty's a composer, as well as a Grammy-nominated producer. He wrote a show called The Fields of Ambrosia. And he wrote, his writing partner is a guy named Joel Higgins. And Joel and I had starred in Oklahoma on Broadway together. So Joel suggested me for the lead in, Marty, in their show, The Fields of Ambrosia. And so that's basically, in a nutshell, how we met through that show of Fields of Ambrosia, which led to many, many, many more chapters uh, in our lives. And I'm going to let you now explain the rest so I can save it. 
okay? Well, she's right, and she came in. Uh, the, the, the only twist of this story that's fun and funny is that I may never have met this lady who's been uh, my partner for 28 years um, if, if this didn't happen, that the show Grand Hotel, which was playing at Martin Beck, was actually dark on Monday nights. And the short version of that is, we contacted Christine. Would you be interested in singing this musical? She said, sure, send me some recordings. I want to hear the music. So one week went by, Joe called, no response. Two weeks went by, no response. We're about to go into rehearsal for this workshop. And I'm saying every day, did you hear from Christine Andre? She says, no. I said, we have to move on. She obviously hates the music. <laughs> she doesn't want anything to do with it. She's too embarrassed to even call back and say, I, I don't want to yeah. do it. So let's move on. So finally, after two and a half weeks, we called another girl in who was starring in Grand Hotel. And she came in and she was wonderful. She loved the score. She sang it down. And we rehearsed two, two, two or three days with her. And she said, the only problem is, she said, you know, we actually play on Monday nights. And I said, she said, but I, ha I can take a personal day and I'll do it for you guys. And we said, oh, that's great. She comes in the third day. Meanwhile, Christine finally listens to the tape two and a half weeks after we sent it to her. Calls, reason. calls Joel and says, I have to do this. And Joel says, I'm really sorry. We already cast it. And she says, kill her. And we said, no, I we did. can't do that. She actually said that. And so just kill her. This wonderful, <laughs> wonderful girl came in and she said, I'm sorry. She said, I asked for a personal day. They won't give it to me because we have too many understudies on already. And that's very unusual, but they won't give it to me. So I'm going to give my notice and quit the show. To which we said, and we would have said this whether or not Christine was in the, in the, uh, wings. Not, we don't want to say wings, you know, in the, in the, in the waiting area. Um, <laughs> And we said, no, no, you can't quit a Broadway show to do two nights of a reading. We thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Get Christine on the phone. And I met. So I always say, if that show was dark on Monday night, I would never have met this lady. And uh... in my defense, I was in <laughs> tech rehearsal for 10 days of a Marsha Norman play at a regional theater just outside New York City. And so that is why I didn't respond, because tech is crazy. And it was a crazy time. And then finally, like on the final night of tech, we were busing back to New York City and we'd all celebrated with lots of margaritas and I put on my cassette player and my headphones and I heard his score and I went, oh my God, oh my, oh my, oh, oh my God. And I knew I had to do this show and then they told me this other girl got it. And that's when I said, you just have to kill her. Well, that's she how didn't we, have to die, that's how and I met. got to do the show. And that wasn't supposed to be anything together. more than than that. We did the uh, we did the two performances. Got very friendly. We walked down the street. We had drinks together. Um, I was in an ending of a of a marriage, and and you know, Christine was Already very sweet, mind. but she went uh, her way, and I went back to California. And a few weeks later, well, about a month later, she called me and said, "I have a very important date." I would like a whole new show. I know you do arrangements. Would you come into uh, New York and get this ready for me? I need a 45 minute set. We're going to the White House. And I said, wow. I said, that's great honor and I'd love to do it. Uh, I flew east and as I like to say in the show, I, I never went back west, but that's another story. And uh, that's how we met and that's how we began our performances uh, together. Very first performance ever in the living room of the living quarters of the uh, senior Bush White House back in 92, May of 92. So, so 92 is the year, is that right, 92, 91, 92? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, that's great, great story. Molly, you have a question. Well, I do, I have missed you all, and you don't realize it, Christine, but you're performing in my house all the time. I just, no, no. <laughs> all the time, I say, Alexa, play Christine Andreas. And she starts singing. Oh God, she's starting now. Alexa, oh, stop. She was gonna, she was gonna, no, she's in my house. You she started ours. <laughs> she heard you in my house. <laughs> That's very cute. I could just shut my mouth and let it play. No. I love, just love it. And your voice is so beautiful. But what are you all doing to entertain each other? Is Marty serenading you on his accordion? Yes. 
Yes, uh, he has. And we have, my son is here with us as well. My special wonderful. So the three of us, you know, we're busy. I don't know. People say they're bored. I haven't, I haven't stopped momentum. No. Since yeah, all plus laundry. And <laughs> Well, we Two have, men in the house? We, we have, a, we have a guest. We have a 32-year-old boy who uh, had to come here because if he was staying in his group home, we wouldn't have been able to see him at all Another or take him wreck. out, and Christine would have been a wreck. So for the past now, we're going on nine weeks. Mac has been our guest. Uh, he eats a full meal, you know, four times a day. Uh, he's <laughs> so on, we're cooking and cooking and cooking. He takes a great advantage of, of our largesse, and you think he'd buy me one bottle of wine? Not yet. But just, but just living, it, just though. living is taking up all of our time. <laughs> and in that framework, you know, Marty, we do make music. We put out a couple of videos because a lot of performers are are putting music out there to just keep things buoyant for people. Because 54 uh, below the club in New York has something called 54 at home, and they'll play prior shows that they've recorded and and you know re stream them lot uh, stream them um, online. So we put out about three or four videos, and what we do, we'll do, we be doing oh, some more. You can look at them on YouTube. They're Musical what? medicine. Musical medicine. With but we name. also had, interestingly enough, a job. Somebody called in the Broadway oh, yeah. community, asked if Christine would do a concert for his wife's birthday, a surprise, this way, the way we're doing this now. And we said, oh, we'll try it. Why not? So we actually did a concert for this sweet. lady Friday night a week ago, and that worked really well. It was well. her birthday, and, that, and I was her guest. Yeah. You know, oh. so that's sweet. So that's what we're doing and, and doing the usual things. We we moved into this house about a year and a half ago. So we're still unpacking boxes that we kept saying, oh, we'll, get, we'll get to those and then we'll be off on a cruise. You, you know, know, you pray for time. And now that's all we've got. So <laughs> prayer answered. All those things we've never gotten to do, you just do them, you know? Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Well, that sounds great. I'll see you soon, I hope. Great to see you okay. and Rusty. Okay. How about a song, Marty? Me, I think it's better if Christine sings, <laughs> it, but I'll play a little something for her. Absolutely. Okay. And you can explain right. why we're doing this one, Chris. This oh, one of the first so one of the first cocktails and conversations we did on Regent was, Saint, was on St. Patrick's Day. And um, we had put together we had done that prior to, or this was, wasn't the first time we did this combination. No, the first but, time we did it on Regent. But the first time we ever did it on Regent, we had a song from a Broadway show that's an Irish tune, and then there was a beautiful Irish air. We interpolated the two songs. And it was really, I, I didn't expect it, but the reaction was very emotional. And people were, I guess, just, I don't know, maybe St. Patrick's Day. Maybe they were totally in their cups. I don't think so. It was just, um, it was very special when we finished the song, the kind of um, rapport and um, I don't know, the way it just, we communed on this one number. So here we go. I hear a bird of Lockamore bird. He well may be bringing me a cheer and more. I feel a breeze, a river shine and breeze. He well maybe it's followed me across the seas and tell me In Glockamora, is that little brook still living? Does it still run down through Donegal, through Kitty Vex, Kilkerry, and Kildare? How I feel in Glockamora, is that little tree still weeping? Does that laddie with a twinkling eye come whistling by? And does he walk away sad and grieving? Not to see me there. 
so I ask each weep and willow and each brook along the weed and each lamb who comes a whistling to Is not for the parting that my sister feels. Tis not for the grief of my mother. Tis all for the loss of my bunny Irish mother. Now my heart is broken forever. Red is the rose from yonder garden. Fair is the lily of the valley, clear is the water that flows from the forest. Oh, my love is fairer than a So I ask each weep and willow, and each brook along the way, and each lad who comes a whistling to Thank you. Thank you, Christine. We were That's actually supposed to, we were supposed to get to Dublin, weren't we, on this cruise? Yeah. We're, we're not on together. We're. <laughs> we're. On this cruise, we're not on together. That would have been a treat. Oh, I know. It's our first time supposed to be in Ireland. God, could you imagine? Well, and I was going to see Cork, the land of my ancestors. Okay. <laughs> Next year. Next then, year. So, no, that's, a, no. that's right. <laughs> Next up is Josh Murray. Josh, you have a question for Christina Marty? I do. So we've all been doing a lot of self, a lot of reflection as we're isolating. Yes. And Christine, I always very, very often think of that day that we unexpectedly ended up in Naples oh, just yeah. over a year ago. And you took, I, I won't get emotional because we're emotional, but emotional. And you took, yeah. You took one arm around me and one arm around my sister, and you started singing Smile by Nat King Cole as we walked the streets of Oh, that's right, I did. And it was just marvelous. So my question to you is, what are you two looking back on fondly from our adventures? Well, that was a big one. Marty was actually going to speak to that. Because that, yeah. really, that was a serendipitous day. That was the day that wasn't necessarily supposed to happen. We were supposed to be at another port, right? Yes. And so we couldn't go there, so we all ended up in Naples. Do you tell? It was a, it was a lovely day. Well, it was okay. you, your sister, Kevin. That was just la last year, and uh, 
we had joined the ship in Rome, and you guys were having trouble getting into ports, as I recall, prior to our Was it the wind? You. What was it? I guess the seas were just a little choppy, rough. and they couldn't take the tenders in. But in this occasion, we were supposed to go into Positano, and 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 I guess when you went into the other ports, you just didn't do that. But uh, Captain Felice said, I'm going to get the ship into Naples. I'm going to get a, a slot to berth, and he did. And Kevin calls me on the phone and said, you're the Naples guy. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> and it actually had a very, He's Italian. it had a really sort of touching um, memory for me, Josh, because when I was 12, it was the first time I ever got on a ship. I got on the um, Cristoforo Colombo and the Italian lines and with my grandfather and my grandmother, they took me back to uh, where they were born. And we came into Naples, into that exact port. Um, many years prior, right? And I'd never been back to Naples that in, that, in that port. No, no, that's, that's allergies. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I had never been to that port since that day that we, we came in after that trip across the Atlantic Ocean. So it had fond memories. And, and of course, it, for a 12-year-old, my eyes were wide open at that time. But, but we got together and we, we had that morning. Do you remember it, the eating? Now, you get great food on board region, great food. All the restaurants, you know, our favorite is Seven, and prime, seven, what is the Prime Seven? And, um, but even if you eat everything on the ship, when you get off at Naples and Italy and France, you have to have something. So we started <laughs> at Gambrinus. Yeah. Gambrinus is the famous pastry shop in the Gallery uh, um, Victor, uh, Victoria, Emanuel. Victoria Emanuel, yes. And we went in and we had cannoli and we had sfogliatelles and different cakes. And I'm ordering everything and we're having coffee and eating all this with Josh's sister and Kevin. I have photos of us all. And then Kevin said, okay, what do we do now? I said, I don't know. He said, how about pizza? So then we went and got pizza Didn't up we, the like, street. Google, like, we were, we were, going, we were going backwards like... instead of everything. I think we finished the day with, with uh, you know, some sort of uh, pork sandwich somewhere oh, down God. in the docks. So it was a great memory. <laughs> And, and also put on a couple of pounds, but we had fun. It was always fun with you guys. And one of my fondest memories, and it's actually not a port, um, Captain Felice, uh, Marty and I, we were swimming in the pool. And suddenly- Morning after the show, yeah. It was the morning after the show, right? And this uniformed guy, you know, just is standing there patiently, like, and looking sort of like, not trying to, but like standing there. And I said, I, I think that guy's waiting. For us. Your first thought is we're doing something wrong. Thought, we're, yeah, not, you're we're not supposed to be in the pool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I, I got out of the pool and it was the captain. And he just wanted to tell me how much he enjoyed the show, which was really sweet. And he just couldn't have been, you know, he, 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 had, he had such a humility and a sweetness about him. It was, and we became friends, right? In fact, about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, I WhatsApped him because we shared WhatsApp. And I said, Captain Felice, how are you doing, you know? And that very day, he had just relieved all of his crew. They had, I mean, I guess he had a skeleton In crew Dubai. on board and he was on board the ship by himself and he was quite emotional, you know, because, and he just had to stay with the ship in Dubai. And I said to him, well, I'm gonna have to send you some music then to cheer you up. And I sent him some of my musical medicine, which I mentioned earlier, Marty and I are sending out YouTubes of music during this time to, for buoyancy. And I said, I'm gonna have to be sending you a lot more. <laughs> um, but he sounded, you know, it was just one of those sort of wonderful psychic connections. I just felt like reaching out to him and it happened to be actually almost the very moment when he had said goodbye to his crew. So I was really happy to do that because he's been pretty special in our lives. That's great, great, we really miss him. Marianne, do you have a, a question for Christina Marty? It's kind of an interesting history because Marty and I go back to the 1960s. And so I was there when, when 28 years ago when Christine came in and I think I've heard everything they've done. They're 54 below, uh, boats, uh, land, sea, whatever, no air yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I, having seen so many of your performances, I'm wondering what themes you're going to pick as you go forward. I mean, you've done the Piaf, the ladies, the, you know, the shows, um, Marty's music. What, what are you putting together to go forward? Well, what's curious is 
before any of this pandemic hit, I wrote a show to do, which I just did at 54 Below, and I should be doing again, hopefully in September. And it was a show that I wrote to cheer myself up. Because with even without the pandemic, things have been a little bit screwy for most of us, you know, a little upside down. Doesn't matter where your politics lie, things, as an American, things feel a little unsettled, a little uncertain. And I needed a show that just reminded me of, of the whole package of being a human being. The fragility of being human, the heroic aspects of being human, how we really step up and go beyond what we think we can do. And so I wrote a show called And So It Goes, Life and Love, Lost and Found. And it's all, <laughs> which means any song I want to sing, but um, it, 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 it turned out, you know, to be quite, uh, it was beautifully received Christian. because everybody was feeling this unsettled feeling. So now that we've had this going on, I haven't really felt compelled to write anything more at the moment because we're coming, this is a brand new show, we're coming back again with it. Although maybe I'll tweak it now that we've gone through this, of course, and have had all this time to, you know, the subconscious is uploading for me during this time. There's so much time to yourself. And, we, and, and this time has really been family time for us. Having my son with us, who's in a group home, because he wants to be, and we see him almost every weekend, but having him every, every day here, night and day as he's maturing is fascinating. And, and just us together, every single minute, together, but what, every working single minute. Working on working good. Against, <laughs> trying to direct your question a little more. What happens with the this, with this, this, this shows on cruises is we start to work shows, the new show, couple of numbers Find in. Way, you don't yeah. change the whole show, but you start to work things in. That's what we did with Pia. Pia started entering into the uh, the lexicon of the show and a couple of numbers. And if we ever get an accordion on board, Josh, you'll yeah. see what you're going to see in the next number. <laughs> but yes, that's that's what we hope to do, to work the, the uh, and so it goes into the show along with the Pia. But, but what we've been doing on the shows has already influenced what we do on land they both seem to influence each other it's it's kind of interesting i think as an artist you know you're just you're existing day by day and what's going on in your life then is somehow coming together and 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 being transformed into what you want to express musically so it's just an ongoing thing and was that confusing no <laughs> <laughs> so it would be curious. I mean, I, at the moment, I don't feel like I've done much musically because I felt like I addressed a lot of what I'm feeling. But by the time we get back to doing stuff, probably stuff will happen. Well, you, somebody <laughs> asked if I was entertaining Christina. I think it was uh, Molly said, were you playing my accordion for her? Is that what you said earlier? And um, the truth is that I, I sit down now that I have the time. That was my first instrument. I, I mastered mm. the instrument by the age of like 18. Was really a very, very good concert accordionist. And uh, but I don't play it as much, so I have time now. And I sit down. And I play some of the the classical pieces that I knew, and and uh, just for my own benefit. And Mac and Christine love to hear it. So there's nothing lovely so about nice walking to do into it. the room and watching Marty put on the accordion, or him sitting down at the piano and just starting to play because he feels like playing. Like the other day he read something in the New Yorker about Sesame Street. Marty had written for Sesame Street. He just sat down the piano and started playing all the songs that he had composed, remembering exactly how he had laid them down for Sesame Street. Well, actually it was, cool. it's an interesting point, and I'll get off of this right away, but. What? It, well, it's just that when I went <laughs> back to that song, I was looking at a, a guy who was 23 years old constructing a song. So I went back and analyzed what I was doing and said, wow, that's interesting that I actually did that and did that. I kept, yeah. And I was saying to Christine, it just yeah, fasc to fascinated well, me is. because I haven't played these songs in forever. You know, yeah. uh, once we record them, I sort of let them go. They were kids, kids songs, but um, that whole article on Sesame Street brought it back. It was it's fun good when you appreciate yourself. I yeah. like that. So <laughs> should we do an accordion number, Kevin? Would that be good? How about something French, since we're supposed to be in a yeah. chateau in Bordeaux drinking wonderful uh, wine? We'll do so <laughs> we're all learning patience, right? Uh -huh. Right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I often say of this one song, this is from my show, PF, my PF show. And I often say of the song that if Paris were a song, and apparently Paris is beginning to reopen now, 
which is lovely to hear. But if she were a song, this would be she. You're not gonna sit here? You're gonna sit there? Okay. Sous le ciel de Paris s'envole une chanson. Ah, elle est née d'aujourd'hui dans le cœur d'un garçon. Sous le ciel de Paris marche des hommes. Le bonheur se construit sur un air découvert. Sous le pont de Bercy, à Villezo, à Si, de musiciens, quelques vagues puis les gens parmi eux. Strange beware, there's a love in the air on the Paris skies. Try to be smart and don't let your heart catch on fire. Love becomes king the moment it's seen on the Paris sky. Lonely hearts meet at night on the streets of desire. Oh, I fell in love. Yes, I was a fool. For Paris can be so beautiful. Cool. Paris is just a gay cat who wants to love and then forget. So strange and beware. There's a love in the Terrific. Oh my God. And to think we're going to be in Bordeaux tonight listening to the whole Fiat Stop concert. It. Stop oh. it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Hey, the last question for our cocktails and conversation is from Colleen Crowley. Colleen? So I'm, I just have to say it's so nice to see you guys. Everything you do is so soulful in your music. It's so beautiful. And that that Irish song, I didn't hear you sing that before. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? How are things in Glacamora? But my father used to sing that. And his family was from County Cork. So that's probably, yeah, there you go. So I just wanted to know, you guys have, after 28 years, have had so many projects together. And you seem like you're such a good team. And people are always looking for the secrets of, what makes that kind of relationship work? And so I was thinking, what was the most challenging project that you guys have had together that you walked away and you said, you know, this one really made us stronger? <laughs> My, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think after Fields, it's, 
the most challenging part of our life. This was the most challenging. He wrote this incredibly beautiful show that I loved performing, and we did it regionally, and it was a sensation just outside of New York in a, in a very prestigious uh, regional theater. Uh, we, and we, yeah. we gained a producer who wanted to take it to Broadway. Uh, my agents at ICM wanted to take it to Broadway. He was able to raise, uh, it's an interesting subject matter, I won't get into it, but he didn't raise all, enough money to go to Broadway. He needed five, he got to about three and a half, and somebody suggested he go to London because for three and a half, you can do a West End show that would appear to be five million in, in um, New York because the rates of the, the, um, the workmen and the actors and the musicians are a lot less expensive and you can do it. So uh, we all thought that was a great idea because the Kiss of the Spider Woman had just done that. and said, oh, we'll go over. It'll be a hit over there. We'll take it back to the States then. Well, it was a very American show, and we made a very major mistake after nurturing this show uh, mm -hmm. to bring it to London because it, 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 it just baffled the uh, British audiences. And the, we had so much hope for it that Christine and I, after it closed, after about a three-month run, uh, decided to stay in London another nine months and just try to heal. And we had put so much stock into that in, you our, don't realize in our young it, relationship. Yeah that it had really knocked the uh, wind out of our sails. And I'll never forget uh, Marianne's late husband when I wrote my next show, Johnny Guitar, that played off Broadway and was a hit and won awards here in New York City and now travels about the world. He just came up to me, he was my mentor and uh, I had known him and loved him for a long time. But he said to me, I am so impressed that you just got up off the canvas and wrote another show and that, only happens when you have somebody like Christine behind you saying, you got to write, you got to keep doing it, you got to do it. Just get up and, you know, don't feel sorry for yourself. I never do. But just don't think, you know, that the fight is over. It's, 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 it, it we was, don't know how long it is. So just keep going. And was that, just, was, that was really an important period of our it life. It was the most we extraordinary bonded. time because, I mean, this is a mystery, what we're in now, but that felt even like a bigger mystery because we had emptied our soul almost into this project. And our wallets. <laughs> and our wallets. We had emptied everything into it. But, and, uh, I, and we would probably end up doing that again over something we felt that much And that was in 95. And I said to Christine, yeah. I said, our relationship was forged in fire then because yes. every day in, in a little London flat, we, we figured it out and, and, and one step at a time. And... Without her, and I would like to think that without me being by her side, it would have been a different result. And it wasn't a sad time. I mean, it was, there was a lot of mourning going on, but it was an actually a very beautiful time. Everything about those months. We didn't know how long we were going to stay there. We didn't know anything. It was really day to day. How are we going to get back into our back of the saddle? Our own, how are we going to get back in our bodies again? How are we going to get back into expressing again? You know, we, didn't have ne we had no idea how. We just loved each other and, and tried to you know, look at what each day would bring that was affirming. And we didn't think about it, we just did it. And because it was a new relationship, you know how you are in new relationships too, you're, you're for, you, know, you really are forging. You have the, the will, the appetite, the energy to build, because you know, we were building our life, really. Mm -hmm. We could just agree on who's going to we'll do the dishes every night. Things would be great. <laughs> we agreed he would do all the cooking in our life. That was a very good thing. He does. <laughs> no, that, that, that's true. That was probably the most challenging. But also, not working is challenging. We're really great when we're working. Mm -hmm. you know, the easiest thing we do together is work. Um, and, and not working is when we're just... I'm just me and Well, I mean, we're usually him. off to an airport somewhere within, yeah. you know, we stay home for two, three weeks, a month is a long time home. We're out at least going to another city in the States to, you know, do a performance at a performing arts center. So this has been really weird. I, I said to someone recently, it's been almost three months since I uttered the words, Christine, we're going to be late. <laughs> I, haven't said that, I haven't said that once in three months, and that's a shock. <laughs> I kind of love not feeling time. And really, like you wake up, and I said, it is like Groundhog's Day. You wake up, and Marty's in the same red chair, listening to news or whatever, figure out what, what I can bear to listen to and what I can't tolerate. And then I walk in, and he tells me the news, and then my son gets up. And it's like it's the same pattern. 
every day. You're opening up the house, then you're closing the house down. You're opening it up. And I said to my son, go wake up your room. Now go put your room to sleep. You know, it's like, and this, and then the day's over. And then the next day, and then one weekend. And then I find this time passing very quickly. So, but that cheers. said, I can't wait to get a call. I know. Call from our agent and say they're open again. Uh, Do you want to fly to Lisbon? Yes. 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 I'll fly anywhere. Just, just yeah. tell me. Anywhere. <laughs> For Mother's Day, they had, they had these virtual trips you could give your mother. You know, you could give your mother a virtual trip to Rome. I, I didn't do it, but I mean, virtual is not the same, but that's what we've got right uh, Soon we'll all be traveling We'll be again, there. Folks. We'll be there. Kevin. Marty and Christine, we have come to the end of our time, and I wonder if you could take us out with a final song. We so appreciate you taking the time, along with our ambassadors today, to share this with our friends at Region. Um, take us out, if you would. Well, we were going to be on the World War Cruises this time, so we picked a song from World War II that we seem to end this thing appropriately. All of you, great to see you, and we will see you in the flesh, hopefully before too long. Stay well, everybody, and healthy. This is appropriate for so many reasons, because obviously World War II, talk about uncertainty. And so this is a song about that and, and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Stand back, yes. I'm standing back, Martin, and I'm singing the song. Cathedral bells were tolled and our hearts sang on. Was this the thrill of Paris or the April dawn? Who knows if we shall meet again? But when the morning shines, ring sweet again. Christine and Marty, ambassadors, thank you for this. I uh, can't wait to share this with our friends at Regent. Uh, I'd like to propose a toast. 
So we all sail again. Cheers, all of you. Thank you. Be safe. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Got it. Sous le ciel de Paris s'envolent nos chansons. Ah, elle est née d'aujourd'hui dans le cœur d'un garçon. Sous le ciel de Paris marche des hommes. Le bonheur se construit sur un air découvert.